ราบนะคะว่ามีการลงทุนในประเภทหนึ่งก็คือการลงทุนในไม้กฤษณานะคะเรื่องราวจะเป็นยังไงไปพูดคุยกับคุณจริงๆเป็นต้องเรียกว่าดรแอนดรูสติลนะคะท่านเป็นประธานเจ้าหน้าที่บริหารของเอเชียฟอร์เรสทรีค่ะเราไปติดตามกันเลยค่ะคุณผู้ชมคะวันนี้ดิฉันจะพาคุณผู้ชมมารู้จักอีกหนึ่งบริษัทนะคะซึ่งก็มีธุรกิจที่น่าสนใจนั่นก็คือบริษัทเอเชียฟอร์เรสทรีแมネจเมนต์นั่นเองนะคะวันนี้จะพาคุณผู้ชมไปพบกับดรแอนดรูสติลซึ่งเป็น CEO ของ The Freedom Group ซึ่งก็เป็นบริษัทแม่นะคะของเอเชียฟอร์เรสทรีแมเนจเมนต์ค่ะสวัสดีค่ะคุณแอนดรูค่ะสวัสดีครับ Thank you very much for joining our interview today uh, First of all we would like to um, know about the core business of Asia Forestry Management well, Okay, Asia Forestry is a premium supplier of an essential oil called Oud Oil right. uh, We've been operating in Thailand now since 2006 We are one of the largest producers of Oud Oil in, in the country and we've been focusing on using our expertise to make sure that we become and we maintain our position as a premium supplier in the country Right, and um, who is your clients? We have extensive clients throughout the Middle East. Uh, premium, the primary users of the products are the Muslim community in the GCC countries. But we've expanded our markets into the fragrance industry, and we now have significant buyers from perfume houses in Europe and America. Right. What about the competitors? Well, there are competitors in the market, but I think we've got significant advantages in that we've established connections overseas to penetrate the market. We've based our strategy on premium price, also the fact that we can provide consistent quality at a, at a fixed price as well. Right. What about your um, uh, production capacities? We've just expanded the factory at the moment to 120 stills, which takes us to possibly the, the second largest facility in Thailand. Our plan is to continue that expansion to become the largest not only in Thailand but also in Southeast Asia. Right. Could you give us an overview of the um, overall industry? In Sure. In, in terms of forestry, there's a significant amount of trees available in Thailand, but also throughout Southeast Asia. The, right. The particular product is Aguilaria and it's microclimatic it grows in only 11 countries the the industry has been pretty much a cottage industry small holdings that have been supplying small amounts of oil via various traders which end up uh, people increasing the price throughout to the end user we've looked at the opportunity to go direct to the end user and cut out the middleman thereby offer a price sensitive product but what we've seen is that the, the buyers are looking for significant quantities that nobody else can provide in batch production. As we've penetrated the fragrance industry, they, they need a perfume that, mm -hmm. a product that will not change their perfume fragrance over, the, over time. You cannot have an Armani fragrance smelling <laughs> different next month. Right. Um, because of our ISO procedures and the quality assurance that we put in place, we've been able to offer that to clients and that's given us a, a significant advantage. What, we, what we've noticed, or the research that we've done is in, back in 2007 is the only reliable data from CITES that shows that this was a $800 million a year market in the wholesale sector. Now we've predicted a 4% growth on that, so 2013 should see the oud oil industry hit a billion dollars per year. Yeah. But the growth has but also been driven from the fragrance industry. That's a $33 billion a year industry that's been growing year on year significantly, and the major growth has been in the Middle East. Now, we've looked at that attitude and the, and the change from using wholesale products to using the fragrance products, and seen that the demand is only going to increase. Right. Um, would you consider the global slowing down at the moment? Maybe you know, uh, uh, carry on through what's the next year or uh, in the next in, in a couple of years. That would that be the threats of your your We business? haven't seen it affecting our markets at all. The demand is still there, certainly from the GCC countries, mainly because this is a cultural element. Right. The oil is written into the Quran as well as being written into the Bible. So Muslim communities are using this extensively as part of their religious ceremonies and uh, to get them closer to God or the Prophet Muhammad. So nothing is going to change. The slowdown hasn't affected that market. And for in terms of our production capacity at the moment, we are still, st still quite small. 
we only supply about half a percent of the demand for a country the size of Oman, for example, which has, I think, 1.3 million people. So the smaller countries, the demand is around 3,000 kilos per year. But then we start to look at markets in Saudi Arabia where there are significantly higher volumes used in a raw state. Right. Would you um, consider other factors that would affect um, the growth of your company? In can you expand on when, when you say other factors, what would you mean? Any other risks that you may see? Um, the only other risks that we can perceive at the moment are competitors coming right. alongside of us. But because of our advantages, our competitive advantage in this market, right. any other competitor is really going to have to work hard to catch up. We have our own intellectual property and we've developed relationships in the Middle East where it's a relationship-based culture. Mm -hmm. It's not sold That's necessarily true. on price or product. Right. It's about how you interact with those individuals. We've spent a lot of time at uh, different exhibitions around the world, in Europe, in America and in the Middle East, building those relationships and on the back of that, we've built a successful business. Right. Uh, any risk that we perceive is a new entrance to the market. We, we, challenge, we welcome and, uh, the challenge and people coming to us and trying to, to take us off our perch, but right. I don't think it's going to happen. We've got such advantages that we're at least three or four years ahead of our competitors. Wow, that's great. Um, I would like to know about your business strategies and policies you know, from now on, maybe uh, the short-term uh, short and long-term investment. Sure. We've just established a Luxembourg SICAF fund, which is in a very strong regulated market, and we're talking to numerous institutional investors on bringing large-scale funding into the region. Thailand and beyond. That allows us to expand our feedstock supply in significant capacity. We are then also in negotiations with two entities in the Middle East to establish facilities to produce oil in those countries directly uh, into the markets that we're supplying, but ensuring that the feedstock can be exported from Southeast Asian countries. So a lot of work going on by our team at the moment, but it's quite exciting times for us. Right. What is your uh, expecting for, for the growth of this year? The fund is targeting in the first 18 months $100 million. Right. And we're part of the way towards achieving that. There's been a lot of work going in with the team conducting roadshows and meeting the various institutional investors as well as the platform providers. So very, very positive and we hope to see our plantation capacity expanding in Thailand significantly as the first stage. Oh, that's good. Um, I've heard that you know you just received a Doctor of Science um, from University of Hull, England. Congratulations. Thank you. And also, uh, you are also the um, the founder of Plant a Tree Today Foundation, right? Could you tell us about um, the, your foundation? What is the objective, and how how could how could it um, help the social and environmental development in sure. Thailand? Our, our main aim as a company, obviously we work commercially in forestry, but we want to maintain our sustainable stance. We don't want to damage the environment and we certainly won't ever chop down a forest right. to recreate a commercial plantation. So we, we don't want to be perceived as the, the bad guys. We certainly have a, a hand on our heart in supporting the environment and supporting reforestation. As we've seen the devastation in Thailand, which in part can be attributed to deforestation years ago with the flooding. So when we set out years ago with the company, we, alongside that we wanted our own CSR strategy whereby we could demonstrate we are planting significantly more trees to help the environment than we are ever going to chop down commercially. And today that's, that's still the case. I think we plant 10 times more trees with our charity than we ever work with commercially. But we've gone beyond just pure reforestation. We've, we've won a UN award for our work on social, environmental, economic development as we can see the benefits of working with communities and ensuring that you have economic development within the communities that can protect and support reforestation projects. And we've been from, uh, they say, from a small acorn a great oak tree grows. We, we've certainly seen our charitable entity expand, not just conducting projects in Thailand, and there's a major project underway in Chiang Mai at the moment. Right. I think this weekend, um, there's co uh, in collaboration with one of the royal projects we're conducting, I think 200,000 trees being planted in the ground with the support of uh, Soneva Group. And we have expanded beyond Thailand to support projects with 
uh, in other Southeast Asian countries with the support of Standard Chartered Bank, uh, HSBC, Royal right. Bank of Scotland, HFC, and the Six Senses Group and now Suniva, they've supported us in Thailand. So it's, it's been significant growth and we're, we're happy with the work and con want to continue that. That's good. คุณผู้ชมคะนี่ก็เป็นอีกหนึ่งบริษัทนะคะที่เราได้เห็นเป็นตัวอย่างนะคะนอกจากที่จะดูเรื่องของการเติบโตของธุรกิจอย่างก้าวกระโดดแล้วนะคะในอุตสาหกรรมที่เราอาจจะไม่ได้คุ้นหน้าคุ้นตากันเป็นอย่างดีแต่ก็เป็นหนึ่งอุตสาหกรรมที่น่าสนใจนอกจากนี้ที่สําคัญที่สุดก็คือการที่เข้ามาดูแลในเรื่องของสิ่งแวดล้อมนะคะด้วยการที่มีการจัดตั้งฟอนเดชันนี้ขึ้นมานะคะเพราะฉะนั้นอันนี้ก็ถือว่าเป็นอีกหนึ่งความสนน่าสนใจที่วันนี้ทางรายการของเราได้นําฝากคุณผู้ชมนะคะ Thank you very much Kunen Roo for joining us in today ค่ะวันนั้นต้องยอมรับนะคะว่ามีความลำบากใจเพราะว่าไม่ได้รู้เรื่องเกี่ยวกับไม้กฤษณะเลยนะคะแล้วก็มีการไปพูดคุยกับ